I finished this character a few weeks ago. If you want to know how I made it, I fully explained it in the last tutorial on the channel, but I wanted to do my own twist on it. So I went ahead and turned it into an underwater princess. In this video, I'm going to show you all the tricks I've used for this scene, from making this animated glowing hair and diamonds, to creating these underwater effects and animating the caustics. You can download the real-time process video of making this character and all of the other characters from the channel on my Gumroad and Patreon page, link in the description. Let's do it. First of all, I select the body and clothing in the edit mode and rotate it to give it a simple pulse. Then using comb tool, I groom the hair to the back so it looks like it's kind of floating in the water. I already have a hair BSDF node that I mixed up with a principal BSDF for the hair, but to achieve this hair color that goes from black to blue, we need to add more. To do that, we can add another mix shader. Copy the whole hair cut in notes and bring it up here. Then connect it to the mix shader. Add a color wrap node and connect it to the factor. Now if we control click on the gradient, we can see it live on the hair. But make sure you're in material or rendered mode. Ctrl T to add the mapping and coordinates. If it doesn't work, that means you still haven't enabled node wrangler add-on. Go to edit, preference, add-on and enable node wrangler. Just change the rotation of the gradient using the mapping node here. Now if we control click on our mix shader, you see we got the hair ranging from black to blonde. This is because we got black and blonde as the color of the hair node. I changed it to a light blue. I like this color, but you can change the colors to whatever you want. Or you can even add a colorful color ramp for more color variety. Now I want to add a lighter highlights to the blue part of the hair. So I add another mix color and connect another hair node to the shader. For the factor, we can add a curves info node and connect the random to the factor. This node distributes white and blue randomly on the hair. Add a color ramp here to adjust the amount of white hair we want in the blue part. Now you can change the color of these random hair strands from this node. Now let's make the diamonds glow. I don't want the whole thing to glow up because that way we can't see the shape of the diamond. So we should add a color ramp with mapping. Rotate the position so it's to start with the black in the bottom and finish with white on top. Now we can use this node to mix our shaders. Add in a simple material with full transmission for the glass. Connect it with the mix shader then connect the color ramp to the factor. After that we can add an emission node to light up the top. Change it to any color you want. For more color variety, we can add a color ramp and change it to any color we want. Then use random object info node to distribute these colors randomly. For the eyes, I already gave the material to the outer rim of the eye. We just need to add a color ramp with the color we want and connect it to the emission. Make the outer layer of the eye more transparent so we can see the iris better. It's time to make the underwater effects. To do that, we need a big cube, which covers the whole scene to use as our volumetric mesh. As you can see, it prevents us from seeing the character. So to fix that, we can go to object properties, under viewport display, switch to display as wire. Now we can see our model and the cube. In the shading tab, add a volume scatter and a volume absorption. Then connect both of them to the add shader node. Since it is in the ocean, we should make both of them blue. But you can change it to any color you want. Also decrease the density to see it better. I accidentally connected to the surface instead of volume. That's why it's black. So make sure it's connected to volume. Mess around with the density number and other things to get it closer to whatever you have in mind. We still missing those small particles that floats around in the ocean. To make them, we can duplicate this cube we already have and make it smaller or bigger just to separate it from the other cube. Go to particle settings and add a new particle system. Increase the lifetime number to something like 400 and end to 1. Change the emit from to volume. Then under velocity, change the normal to 0.4. And under render, change the render as to object. Now we can assign any object we want to be our particle. Just make a UV sphere with a really low poly count because we basically gonna see it as a dot on the screen. We don't need to make the project heavy for no reason. Make it a smaller and place it somewhere outside of the frame. Now select the particle cube again and assign the UV sphere as the object. And don't forget to go to the field weight and turn off gravity because we don't want any particles falling down. Now these particles should float around randomly. Also we need to make our assigned object see through. The scene is too empty. To fill it up, we can add a couple of fishes and just duplicate them to fill in the scene nicely. Now to make the caustic effects, we're not gonna make an actual caustics because it's really hard for the computer to calculate. But thanks to this guy, we have this really nice trick to make a fake caustics that looks real. But first we're gonna create the texture. Add a new plane, give it a material and add a Voronoi texture. Change it to 40 and a smooth F1. Then duplicate the texture and mix them up using a mix color node. Change it to difference. Decrease the roughness on the top one and change the roughness and smoothing on the bottom one. Mess around with the numbers, especially smoothing, to get a similar result. 
notes. You can change the scale manually, but adding two value notes, one for scale and one for W, is the best way. Because this way we can change the number of both of these notes using only one. You can use my settings if you want. Also add a color ramp at the end to increase the brightness. When it kind of looks like the bottom of the pool, it means your caustic system is ready. Select all of the notes and Ctrl C to copy them. Shift A and add a spotlight. In the shading tab, enable use notes, then Ctrl V to paste the notes here. Then connect the color ramp to emission. Select the plane again and remove all of the notes. So we have a clean plane. For it to work, we need to have a mapping node before all of it. Ctrl T on Voronoi texture to add a mapping node. Also connect it to the second Voronoi texture. Then make sure UV is connected to the mapping, not generated. Now our fake caustics should appear as light. We also have this value node here that we can use to move our lights. It's way too fast. So to fix that, we can add a math node, put it on divide and divide it by 500 for example. Now if we drag the values, we can easily see our caustics works pretty nice. Delete the plane and bring back the models. Then place the caustic light on the top with an angle. Then adjust the scale again in the shading tab using this value node. Since she's underwater, she should have more floaty hair. So I groom the hair to the outside a bit more using comb tool. To animate the camera, we can simply select it. While we are on frame 0, we can press I, rotation, scale, etc. And it places the keyframe on the frame 0. Move the timeline to frame 100 for example then move the camera to the next position which is front and place a keyframe here as well to add the handheld look to the camera we can switch to graph editor select the xyz rotation and add a noise modifier and decrease the strength of the noise let's make the glowing hair animation first select the hair and in the materials add a mix shader at the end then an emission node for the glow and connect it to the mix shader give it a blue color now we need few set of nodes to mix the glow with the hair first add a color ramp and connect it to the factor add a mapping and coordinates node and use generated instead of UV. If you have enabled node wrangler, you can Ctrl Shift click on the color ramp to see the gradient better. I change the rotation so the gradient start from back to front. Then we can use this color ramp to adjust the gradient. After that, we want to get it ready for the animation. Add a mix shader node and drop it after the color ramp. Now duplicate the color ramp and mapping, then Ctrl Shift click on this one so we can see the node on our viewport. Change the rotation of the gradient so it's a start from top to bottom. Then click on this plus icon to add another black color on the color ramp. Now we can just change the position and you see white color moves alongside of the hair. To mix these together, we can choose multiply in the mix color node and connect it to the second one. Now if we change the location, you see only the parts we wanted turns white. But I still don't want every single strand of hair to go white. So we can duplicate our mix node and drop it here. Duplicate the color ramp instead of this one. This time add a curves info node and connect the random to the color ramp and color ramp to the mix shader. Now this color ramp determines the amount of hair strands we want lit. Now control click on the main shader to see what we built so far. Since there's so many nodes, I organize them a bit by giving them different colors. Now let's animate the glowing hair. In the timeline go to the first frame change the location in the mapping so it's a start from the top and while the mass is on the value press i to make a keyframe then go to the last frame and move the location to the bottom and also make a keyframe here by pressing the same key now the hair glow should move from top to bottom before getting an animation render let's do some compositing first before we start we need to get a single frame render to use as our preference after that go to compositing and enable use notes shift a and add a viewer and connect the render to the viewer so we can see the render in the background. Add a glare node and drop it here. Switch it to fog glow and change the size and intensity to your liking. If you want it more intense, you can add some more glare. Now get a render and this is the final results. Hope you find the video helpful and make sure to download the 3D files and real time process video of making this character and lots of other characters on my Gumroad and Patreon page. Link in the description. See you on the next one. Peace.